Hi everyone, so I'm glad to announce that the Django REST framework tutorial series continues. Some months back I started a series, I started a series on building a RESTful API for an e-commerce web application, you understand? So and we stopped at authentication in Django REST framework. So right now we are going to continue again. And this time around we are going to start with building the order API and also the order item API. You understand? So you know, in, in an e-commerce website, whenever you go to this, whenever you visit an e-commerce website, if, the thing we do most times is we add to cart, even without being logged in. We can add items to our cart. You understand? And when it's time for us to make payments, we are then prompted to log in. And on and when and after we've logged in, our cart and cart items are being converted to order and other items. So that is how it works. You understand? So I'm going to show you how this order and other items are going to be created. You know, I'm going to show you how the APIs will be created. It's quite different, but it's not difficult to get. So, it's going to be an exciting time on this channel. So, if you are new to this series, well, so what I want to do, what what I want you to do with now is this: I have a, I have the link to the playlist of this series in this video's description, so you can go and watch the previous episode. And once you are done watching them, you can come back and join us on where we are currently. So it's not difficult at all. I explain everything step by step so you're going to understand so do it to check out for the link in this video's description and without further ado we are getting started right now okay guys make sure you have your order models create your order models don't worry about it these are just simply our choice this makes up the choice field in the stand so these are the choice field. this is the order item once you've made your order models and your order item you have to make migrations and migrate and once you've migrated Make sure you register these two models in your admin.py file. Make sure you are registered there so you can see them in your so you can see it in your admin, in your, in your admin section when you understand. So after we've done this, the next thing to do now is go with our serializers, right? So let me just split my screen. Let me open this on the different on the right. So okay, let me close this. So go and create your serializers, your other serializer. We've done this before, it's simple. I, okay, so let's do that right away. So let's say order serializer. I'm gonna just say class. Let's say order serializer. Serializer. Make sure you spell it well. Serializer. And we're gonna simply inherit from serializers. Dot model serializer. You understand? So I know you're familiar with this already. Model serializer. And once we're done, you know we have to go for our class meta. Class meta. Understand? Make sure you import your other model into your into your serializer.py file. Understand? So up here, I had to import. So these are my models. So I'm going to clear out all these things just too long. So I'm going to just simply put in the asterisk there. So that's going to be short. That's going to make things shorter. So right now, I'm importing all my models from my store app into this serializer.py file. That's what I'm doing here. So. So I have my order model, you'll see model should be equal to order. And once that is done, our fields, I'm going to list out the fields now. The field should be equal to ID. What are the fields? ID placed at, these are the fields over here. You understand? These are the fields there. ID, we have the ID, the placed at. After the placed at, we then have the pending status. Pending underscore status. And the last one is called owner, right? That's the owner of the order you get. So owner. So we've done this already. Perfect. So next thing, go quit your view set. Understand? So quit your view set. And let me show you one more thing again. I have to import all my serializers, all these cut serializer, other serializer. Everything I've been importing into my views. You can see from the serializers, import all. That has been done. So now let's write our order view set now. So I'm gonna say class. Order view sets. We are going to know it from model view sets. So if you're new, if you're new to this series, please go and watch the previous episodes. I'm going to link the playlist in this video's description. So go and watch it and refresh your brain, refresh your memory, and then come back to this particular series, this particular episode we are on, and follow along. You understand? It's not complex. You get so serializer class is going to be equal to serializer class. It's going to be equal to order serializer, serializer. Okay, and the query set, query set is going to be equal to order.object.all.object.all.object.all.object.all.object.all.object.all.object.all.object.all.object.all.object.all.object.all.object.all.object.all.object.all.object.all.object.all.object.all.object.all.object.all.object.all.object.all.object.all.object.all.object.all.object.
all okay now so we've done this now so let's see okay so remember we are meant to make this view protected only logged in users are meant to see their orders and if you're an admin an admin can see all the orders in the database and a regular user is meant to see his or her own orders but right now what we've done so far anybody can just come in here and see any orders and that's wrong so let's just prove this already let's go create some orders on our database let's create some orders so right now i'm going to add some new orders for a specific user so let's add order so i'm going to add order for okay it's currently set to pending so i'm going to add order for mike i'm going to add like two orders for mike let's add another one again let's add another one for mike now sorry mike i said so we save okay so right now mike has two orders this p stands for pending that what the p stands for for more the p stands for pending let me show you okay so where's the other p stands for pending that's what it stands for okay so now mike has two pending orders now so let's go quit so now i'm going to quit a url for this view we just made for this view this other view set let's create the url for it so i'll open my ui.py file in my api app remember i'm writing the apis in I'm writing these apis in this api app and i'm getting and i'm getting the models from the store app so then let's simply add let's add our orders endpoint I'm going to say router dot register and i'm going to let me just say uh, let's just say orders and then I'm gonna simply just say views dot order sorry I spelled views wrongly views dot order view set so now I think that should work let's see what we have so far let's close this my server is running okay so right now let's go down to the orders let's go down to orders endpoints okay just me just say one to seven then remember before you put in orders you need to prefix api in this time for more if you go down to your project ui.py file your project your project ui.py file you also prefix this api before you put in the orders necessary so i'm going to say api then slash slash orders enter okay so right now you can see we have two orders currently in a database and they and they both belong to the same owner i can see the id of the owners are both the same thing this is mike right this is his id but i told you before if you're not logged in you're not meant to assess this page and you are only meant to see your own orders right so now let's go add that feature right now add the is authenticated permission we need to add an and we need to add a permission here that restricts anonymous users from accessing this endpoint right so how do we go about that so we just up here let's go import so just need to import this permission it's called from rest of the permissions import is authenticated so come out to the views now so to the views now just here let's add permission classes permission underscore classes permission class so it's classes so it's going to be equal to is authenticated so is authenticated i expect this to suggest for me but it's not suggested it's authenticated so let's go just copy what we control c and we paste here i spelled wrongly okay now so this endpoint has been secured but we are not done yet you know we are meant to view we are meant to like you are meant to like a user is meant to see his own orders you get and also the admin can see all the orders in our database let's go down to the let's go down to the browser okay so right now to the browser let's see refresh this page so right now if you're not logged in you can't access this this page again right so now we're not done yet okay so so this so i'm going to simply we are going to do what we are going to like we are going to customize this query set we're going to customize it now we're going to just come here and say that get query set get underscore query sets 
okay now so right now what i'm gonna do now is this now i'm gonna check i'm gonna say if if you are logged in if requests i'm gonna just say if self dot request self dot request dot user so it's this to say that if you are currently logged in right i'm gonna let me just come over here or let me just first of all let me just declare a variable now i'm gonna just come over up here enter so i'll simply say user should be equal to self dot request dot user and then i'll come just down here and say if user that's to say if they will logged in user right so the request of user represent the logged in user so i'll say if user and i want to return all the orders for that particular user i'll say order i'll just me just come here and say return return order dot object dot filter owner equal to user and then if the user is an admin understand if the user if the user is an admin i will only just me just say i'll say else if else if user dot is or uh, sorry i made a mistake i should have done it like this i'll let me just say if user dot is staff so i'm checking if, if, if the user is an admin i want to return all the orders so if, if the user is an admin i want to return all the orders that's all so now after i've done this now the next thing is if the user is not an admin, that means user is a regular user. I want to return the I want to return the orders for that particular user. Instead, I'm going to say return order. Is, am I doing return order dot object dot filter owner equal to user. So what what is what is going on here? Now, so for, first of all, I have to now declare a variable that holds a logged in user. And I checked if the user, if the login user is an admin, I have to return all the orders. Or if the user is a regular user, I have to return all the orders meant for that user alone. So that was what we just did there. So once we've done this already, you can move your query sets. You can move it now. So because right now we have customized it. Understand? Right now we're having an error on the screen. We're having an error that says base name argument not specified that's because we just customize the query set if whenever you customize a query set now you need to come over to your endpoints here and add a base name so base name is just referring to like the name of your order list and your order details so i'm going to just say orders so now right now this business means that we can we have two functions first one is called order list and the second one is called order detail you understand detail you get so that's just what it means now so i'm just going to call my orders so that's just once you've done this already everything should be working fine so let's see control c let's run server again so currently i've already logged in mic in i logged in mic already so go down to the browser now and refer to this page mic is logged in so let's see so right now you can see mike can see all his orders currently mike is logged in so i'm going to log out mike and log in a different user and you'll find out that that user won't be able to see any of these orders because the user does not have an order in the stand so let me just pause the video and go log in a different user okay so currently a different user is logged in so i'm going to refresh this page right now you can see now sam is logged in you can see he has he's seeing no orders that's because sam does not have any order remember when we were creating these orders we only created for mike in the sense i'm going to log in as the admin now and the admin will be able to see all the orders remember from what we did here in the query set the admin can see any orders in the database so if you want to learn how to do perform to, if you want to learn how to perform authentication in django s framework just go and watch the episode where and just go and watch the episode where I talked about authentication in Django REST framework. It's in the playlist. You'll find it there. It's the video before this one. The video, the video before this, or two videos before this one. You see it there. Okay, so currently the admin is logged in. So let's refresh the page and see. So right now the admin is logged in and the admin is logged in and the admin can see all the orders in the database, irrespective of the user or the owner of these orders you get. So that's it now but right now remember this, this is just our order model but we are meant to see every other items in a particular order well right now we are just seeing the orders alone so let's go add some orders so let's go add some other items to the order go down to, to your admin we are going to do this manually and in the next video i'm going to show you how to create the orders and other items but let's let, let's continue first 
So right now, I want to add some orders. I'm going to pick the order, this one. Let's add this, let's just say three. And let's add another one. Okay, let's, let's add to this other order. Let's just pick this and let's just say two and then we save. So right now we have two other items for two different orders. Understand? So now we have this other item. Go down to your model. So we want to see everyone see the other items in the order. So right now let's go create our other item serializer. Okay. So let's see the models now. So models for the order item. So just up here, just say class. I'm gonna say order item serializer serializer. So it's simple the way we have been doing before. So now just right there, I've already made my order item serializers. Let me show you something on the models. You will check closely the order item and the models are linked together. And instead they're linked together. Let me show you. Where am I? Just give me some time. So let me show you the top. Okay, now these are our order, and this is the order item, right? So you can see they are linked together using a foreign key. This foreign key here, this foreign key links the order and the other items together. So this related name is automatically a field in the order model. And through this related name called items, you can get the order item for this given order. You understand this items here, this, this related name we have here, serves as a link to the other item. So this items is a field in this other model and through these items we can we can assess the other items for a given order that's all it means so right now under the order serializer i'm going to just come over here and add and add items so i want to see me come over here up here and say items should be equal to um, let's just say order item order item serializer now when we set that to many equal to that's because an order can have several other items i'm going to say it read only should be true that because i don't want to i only want to be able to just see my other items i don't want to create other items for my order you get from my order what i said so let's see what the let's see what our response looks like refer to page now Okay, now you can see now, we can see our items now. But right now, our product is just showing the ID of the products. I don't want that. What I want now is, I want to be able to see, I want to be able to see, I want, I want to be able to see more information about our products, more information. But right now, we're only seeing the ID. The same thing here. So go down to your browser, and just in our other item serializer, I'm going to link our product to the, to our product serializer. I'm going to say product should be equal to, um, let's say I think I have a simple product serializer up here that is much more okay. This, we are going to link that to this simple product serializer. So where's the other item? Just I'm going to just come here and say simple product serializer. So that's just it. So I think everything should run. My server is trying to run again. So that done, let's see. Refresh the, let's go to the browser again and refresh this page. Mm. Okay, right now I can see our products now. We can see the ID, we can see the name and the price. I think this is better now. Setting is fine now. So right now we are able to get our orders as well as its items. We are able to get our order and also the order item inside of each orders. So in the next episode, I'm going to show you how to create orders. You know. This order, we, this, you know, remember this order, we created this order from our admin, from our Django admin. But this time around, I'm going to show you how to create your orders using an endpoint. So, that's the next episode. Thank you.